Hello and welcome to another gg.co.uk video, again kindly sponsored by Boyle Sports. We have reached a decent point in the season where this weekend coming up is the Hennessy Gold Cup. I shouldn't call it that, I should call it the Coral Gold Cup as they are the sponsors of it. But it's a historic race, we've had some real big winners of this, lots of big names etched in the trophy. Denman's on there twice, Native River went and won a Gold Cup after winning this. So I wonder who is going to get their name on the trophy this season. I'm going to run you through some key trends that I've done. There'll be a GG cheat sheet in the description, which you can click and read in a bit more detail, but we'll go through it together in this video. I've also done cheat sheets for the three grade ones coming up at Fairy House this weekend. So we've got the Drimmore, the Royal Bond and the Hatton's Grace. And just in case you need trends to tell you that TFB will win another Hatton's Grace, I've done the donkey work for you. So we can touch on those in the video at the end. They won't take too long. But as I say, the links are in the description. Appreciate if you go and give it a look. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. But for now, I'm going to give you these key pointers I think will be very helpful when looking towards a Hennessy winner. Now, the trends and patterns have changed. Before, it used to be very easy. You just think to yourself, you want a second season novice chaser that's got form about three miles. As long as they were carrying the right sort of weight, they'd be fine. But it has changed a lot. And you'll see that in the last decade stats that I will peel up. Um, I think we'll just crack on. We'll get on with it and I'll stick them up on the screen and we'll see if we can whittle it down. The thing I was going to mention just there was recording this on Sunday. So we haven't got confirmations at the moment. They will come out on Monday. But if you're watching the video after or if you watch it first hand, you can make a note of these. You can tick the boxes for the horses that tick the boxes of the trends that I'll be peeling up. And when you combine these together, it should hopefully give you a bit of an insight in there. There's also one bonus trend that you can look at, which can save you a lot of donkey work. So if you stay in the video, you'll find out how to find the winner without having to listen to all of this. But let's crack on. Talked about second season novices used to be the one. And I say second season novices, that's not that they haven't lost their novice status. It's a second season chaser, but they get to refer to as second season novices. This season, I mean, this century, they've had 22 of the last 24 winners. And in this decade, it's been all of the last 10 have been second or third season chasers so as i said it used to be the second season that number's changed it was 14 this century and six of the last 10 third season chasers has been eight the century and then four of the last 10 so it's worth bringing in that as well but really outside of that you're not going to find the winner we're looking for horses that have more experience now than they used to so seven or more runs over fences seems to be the pinch point 14 winners this century and nine of the last 10 have been that figure now again if you consider that nine of the last 10 have been that figure. Of those 14 of the 24 we're seeing, there was just five of the previous 14 had seven or more runs over fences. Look, it could just be the case now that qualif qualification criteria for certain races means you do have to get more experience into your horses. And the fact that we're now moving away from second season chases to third season chases, this might couple up. But it's worth noting that what we used to consider uh, an easy followable trend for a Hennessy, like a really unexposed horse, might not be as true anymore. Or you do want to find a horse, though, that's had two or three wins over fences. That's a quite counted for 18 winners this century, nine of the last 10. And it's worth mentioning as well that no winner this century has had less than two wins over fences. So no horse that comes in here is still a novice or a maiden, or they can still come in as a novice. It's been one winner of that. But also they can't have come in or they won't have come in with just one win. So two or three wins over fences. There will be some that have had more, so you don't necessarily want to massively discount that. But big positive for two or three wins over fences. This is another one that's changed in more recent years. All of the last seven winners had at least one handicap chase win. 14 winners this century fit that criteria too. So before we had lots of horses that might have been making the handicap debut. They might have only had one spin in a handicap. But nowadays, it seems that horses do want to go through the ranks through handicaps. And again, it may have changed in complexity now because some novice chases from the past and some beginners chases have changed status to be novices limited handicap chases so more than likely now you want to look for a horse that has got handicap winning experience over fences this is one that's always been there has won at about three miles or further i've changed the figures on this so you can see it's 20 of 23 and 8 of 9 instead of being of 24 and of 10 that's because all horses apart from that's all right gino last year had run at the trip too so it's important to have run at the distance really can win without doing it as we saw last year but if you have run at the trip really you do want to have won 20 of the 23 this century and eight of the last nine have done that but i mean it's not going to whittle too many out i don't think that one on its own has won at newbury again you'll see the end figures are a little bit different 12 of the 15 horses that had run at newbury this century had won and there was only four horses that had run at newbury in the last 10 winners but all four of those had won so the rule there is you want a horse that's coming to newbury for its very first look or if they've been here before, they should have won. If you've got a horse that doesn't like Newbury, then 
course, they're probably going to have a little less chance when it comes to a race like this. Next one we want to look at is running in a handicap last time out. So most horses would have run over fences last time out, but there, has, there is a horse that ran in the last decade that was in a handicap hurdle last time out. So running a handicap race of any nature, 13 of the 24 winners this century, seven of the last 10 and all of the last seven winners as well. So again, a big change from what it was before. 13 of those 24 this century, seven of those have come in the last seven years. So it would be a big different trend. It would have been six out of 20, uh, sorry, six out of 17 beforehand. So you can see there's a shift. Something else that's a, a minor shift is horses that have run this season, or more importantly, have run in the last 60 days. 16 winners this century and nine of the last 10. There's been obviously one horse that's come here from the previous season coming in first time up to go and win the race. But typically now, you would like a horse to have run. And as I touched on before, your preference would be that they ran in a handicap like last time out. Sent off a single figure prize last time out as well is pretty important. 17 of the last 24 winners have had that figure, but nine of the last 10 were sent, were sent off. No bigger than sort of nine to one last time out. So that can be quite important to pick out for this year's winner. Uh, Age-wise as well, six to eight-year-olds have the best records. 22 winners this century and nine of the last 10. The two others that come outside that criteria, one was a nine-year-old Denman. You're not going to get many Denmans, are you? And the other was a 10-year-old size in Tennessee. So... I mean, while it is possible, 10 would be the absolute maximum. Really, you'd want to be saying that nine would be probably the ceiling. But realistically, most winners are aged between six to eight. And with the way that horse racing goes these days, they're probably going to be more likely to be seven and eight year olds, I'd have thought, because we don't have as many six year old novices getting the experience that would tick the boxes from the rest of it. That moves us on to a bit with the official rating. So this band's quite big. It's 145 to 155 accounts for two thirds of the winners this century, but 10 of the last 10 winners have been in that band. This has not been profitable to bat blind in isolation though. So obviously with these trends, I give you a number of them because you wanna see who ticks the most boxes. If the horse just falls within this, then of course it's gonna keep most of the field in. But when you couple that up with the number of runs they've had, the age, et cetera, it is worth using this band to uh, whittle the field down. Weight-wise, carrying 11 stones, six pounds or less. So it's gonna be quite a big number of horses that qualify in here, but again, coupled up with other trends will be important. 21 of the 24 winners this century carried that weight. So 11 stones, six or less, and 10 of the last 10 as well. So it is possible to carry a big weight, but again, if your name is Denman. Favorites, this is the one that if you've waited this long, you could have just avoided all the other trends because seven of the last 24 winners or this century have been favorite and three of the last 10 have been favorite. Both of these periods have been uh, profitable just to back the favorite blind. So if you really can't be bothered to do your homework, then just back the favorite and you won't do your money. That covers the Hennessy stuff. As I say, recording this Sunday, Monday, you'll have the confirmations out. So you'll be able to whittle through the field a little bit. And then when you get to final decks, that will let you know the weight stuff and uh, that's probably the only one you really need in that market part might change a little bit by the time we get closer to the festival as well or to the race itself but in the cheat sheet below there's a bit more detail in there as well i've put some other bits in there in terms of price bands not just favorites top five in the betting top three in the betting top seven in the betting there's a few interesting points in there so go have a look at that and as i say there will be a cheat sheet for those three grade ones in fairy house too i'm going to quickly just give you a, a rundown of those while you're watching because again if you stayed this long you deserve to be rewarded so royal bond trends i've done these I say a weird number, but I've gone for the last dozen winners of this race, a number I quite like doing because I feel like it gives quite a good pitch for it. But 11 of the last 12 winners for the Royal Bond, one last time out. 11 of the 12 winners were priced six to one or shorter. 10 of the last 12 winners were unbeaten that season. Again, it's a novice hurdle, though, so they maybe wouldn't have run too many times, but still, it's important to know. Six-year-olds have a 33% strike rate in the last 12 renewals. Uh, it's been profitable to back the third in the market blind in the last 12 as well. There's been four winners, which would have doubled your money, 100% return on investment. Line of the last 12 winners ran between 21 and 30 days ago, and Gordon Elliott's trained four of the last seven winners. So while it might be Willie Munnin's time of year to start throwing horses out, he's already touched on, and this has been recorded before the John Durkham, he's already touched on his horses seem to be needing a run. So that is going to roll into Fairy House next week. Hatton's Grace, probably don't need to give you the trend of this because we've had... Was it Apples Jay did it three times, Honeysuckle did it three times, and TFB is probably going to do it three times. But they were all priced, sorry, 11 of the 12 were priced 4 to 1 or short. It was only TFB at 20 to 1 that knocks that one out of the park. 10 of the last 12 winners finished top two last time out and 7 had won. 10 of the last 12 winners were in the top two in the bet in, and 9 of the 12 winners were previous grade one winners. Uh, the other couple had, or well, the other few had won a grade two already. So, I mean, we know Tiap is going to win. You don't really need the figures for that. Drimmore novices chase trends. Uh, slightly like less 
uh, emphasis on some of the ones in here because 10 out of 12 is the biggest number we can match. 10 of the last 12 winners ran at Down Royal or Punchestown last time out. 10 of the 12 winners ran in the last 45 days. Nine of the last 12 winners came from the top two in the market. Nine of the last 12 winners had run at Fairy Hours before and six of those had won. Uh, both five-year-olds and seven-year-olds have been prof profitable to back blind in the last 12. There's been seven winners of, of those two ages. And Gordon Elliott, again, has trained four of the last seven winners. So it could be time just to keep following Gordo in. But Willie Munnings will turn at some point, right? And who's to say it's not going to be next weekend? Anyway, thank you guys for the support. Make sure you drop a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We will see you again on Thursday for the weekend watch. I'll be back again for, with another one of these videos next week.